What's up guys? Eli here, back for a new video. Um, it's been, I don't want to say hiatus, but it's been like two to two and a half weeks since I've done a video. And it's not because I didn't want to do it or anything like that. It's, I've just been really fucking busy. And when I get really busy, especially when I'm working long hours, I tend to be even, you know, I tend to be pretty tired and lazy on my days off and my downtime. So anyways, I'm back and uh, glad to be back. Um, I apologize for the lighting in this video. It's going to be kind of shitty. Um, probably even more so than normal. I um, I do these videos in my bedroom and my fucking bedroom light uh, bolt went out and I went to change it and guess what? I don't have it. So yeah, I got kind of a dark atmospheric thing going on here. Um, anyways, I'm just going to show a bunch of shit. This is just going to be a collection video. Um, really random shit that I've gotten lately. So I mean, you probably have grown to expect that from me. But yeah, there's going to be no theme or anything like that to this video. I got some DVDs. Uh, I got a VHS cassette, and I have some vinyl, I'm going to show some CDs, I got a fucking bunch of weird stuff. Um, I'm going to start it off with, uh, this is a cool movie, I own it on DVD, and now I have it on VHS apparently. Got Jacob's Ladder, Tim Robbins, you might remember this movie from, I don't know, the 90s or something, I don't remember when it came out. I've only actually ever watched it once, but it's a fucking cool movie, I'm going to definitely rewatch it a bunch of times. Um, as I've said uh, recently, I'm kind of working on like my Hammer Horror collection, going for some old horror since I really kind of missed out on that. Um, when I got into horror, I just kind of mostly got into modern stuff, so kind of taking it back a little bit, and I have a Dracula AD 1972, got Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing, of course. Big lots, five dollars. Anyways, yeah, excited to watch that shit. Um, hold on, I, got, I bought another movie today. <laughs> that I forgot to grab. Um, this is a movie I have not seen, and I'm really kind of stoked to watch it. I want to watch it tonight, but I'll, I probably don't have the energy. We have Brotherhood of the Wolf, or in French, I'm not going to say it, but there you go. It's a it's a French movie. It's uh, uh, to be honest, I don't I haven't seen it, so I can't really go on. You know, I can't say too much, but it's based around werewolves and martial arts and shit. Um, yeah, I just, I've read about it, it seems like a really cool fucking movie, um, really, really stoked to watch that. I actually sought out to go get this, um, read about it just like last night, and I'm like, fuck, I gotta see that, and tracked it down today and bought it. Last DVD here, um, I haven't seen this movie yet, but I really, I've heard really good things when it came out, um, so we have The Host, two disc collector's edition, this is a... Um, I think it's a Korean movie. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's definitely Asian. I want to say it's. I want to say it's Korean. Um, I don't know a whole hell of a lot about it. I know it's about a monster in a river. <laughs> and I heard. Okay, I heard it's a good movie. I heard it's. You know, the budget's a little low. Um, so I heard the CGI with the monster isn't the greatest. But um, if you can get past that, I've been told it's a really good and uh, really good monster movie. So, so yeah. I'm pretty stoked to watch that. Um, this, I just got this the other day. I ordered this because um, I had to have it. You have to have it, too. We all have to have this. Um, it's a re-release of Leprosy by The Mighty Death. Their second album, uh, repressed by uh, Relapse Records. Sorry about that lighting once again. Um, I, you know, I own this on CD, of course, but it was really nice to get it on vinyl. Um, it doesn't come with a whole hell of a lot, which I thought was kind of odd. Um, it doesn't come with any any inserts or anything like that, uh, but it's a, it's a you know it's a double gatefold. Got that blue label, brown label, and it comes on fucking clear vinyl. <laughs> I don't know why I'm gonna show it like you don't know what clear looks like. Anyways, there you go. Um, yeah, had to have it. It's uh it's gonna sound great. I've never heard it on vinyl. I'm not even that type of guy that like oh, I can't wait to hear it on vinyl. Like, if I've heard an album, I've heard it, and that's that's good by me. But anyways, really happy to have that. It's one of my favorite death metal albums. It's one of your favorite death metal albums. It's one of everyone's favorite death metal albums. Next we have, if you've been watching my videos for a while now, um, since like the, the beginning, which not many of you probably have, but that's cool, um, you'll know that one of my favorite non-metal artists is Peter Gabriel. Fucking love Peter Gabriel. Um, once again, I've had this CD for a long time, but now I have the vinyl. This is his album, So. Came out in, uh, it was 80, 86. 
Um, if, even if you're not familiar with Peter Gabriel, it's got like Red Rain, Sledgehammer. Everyone knows Sledgehammer. Fucking Sledgehammer, man. Anyways, it's a good album. It's not his best. It is definitely when he was going in his more commercial, you know, direction. But it's still a fantastic album. I listen to it, you know, still fairly frequently to this day. It's I like it. It's good. Here's another one of my uh, favorite non-metal albums. I've wanted this on uh, vinyl for quite some time now, so I'm glad to finally have it. At the debut album by Phil Collins, Face Value. Um, once again, you might not be that familiar with Phil Collins, but this this uh, this album is in the air tonight. Um, it came out in '81, and this album is. I always consider this album kind of kind of like a lost Genesis album. I mean, this album really sounds a lot like, uh, you know, Phil Collins fronted Genesis. And the reason for that being is the dudes from Genesis <laughs> contributed to this album. I don't remember what exactly they did, but they contribute to uh, some of the songwriting and uh, some of the musicianship, I think. Don't quote me on that. I don't exactly remember all the little details, but I just know that uh, they were involved. So, I mean, this, this to me has always been kind of kind of a Genesis album, really. Um, I don't like every album on the, every song on this album. In the Air Tonight is an amazing song. There's no one, there's no debating that. You'd be a fool to even try. Um, so that is probably my favorite song in the album, but the song that really rivals it, and honestly, I might even like it more, is The Roof is Leaking. Um, fantastic song, kind of a folky, you know, kind of an American folk song sounding um very 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 uh just very powerful and emotional great song um but this album also has a bunch of songs that i really don't give a shit about um you know like horn pop was 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 big at the time uh you know toto was doing it michael jackson was doing it phil was doing it hundreds of other artists were doing it and to me a lot of that's kind of just throwaway. but anyways i do love the album all in all and glad to have it on vinyl <laughs> Now these last two are uh, Alan Parsons Project albums, which is really funny why I even bought these. I like one Alice, uh, Alan Parsons Project albums. Did I even say that right? <laughs> it's hard to, it's hard to talk. Um, I like one of his albums, and for some reason I decided to, whenever I saw more of this stuff, to just randomly pick it up. So I don't know if I like anything else but that one album. That one album being very good. Uh, but anyways, this is, uh, when did this one come out? And I want to say 90s, 84, wow, way off. Anyway, Ammonia Avenue, Alan Parsons Project. Um, if you don't know anything about Alan Parsons Project, it's uh, kind of a prog rock band, um, started in, I'm really no expert, uh, started in, I want to say, early 80s. I could be wrong, it could be 70s, I could be way off. Um, it's, Alan Parsons is a... Uh, he's a producer, I believe, but he's also a musician, and on all his albums he has a whole bunch of people uh, contribute. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's, a, it's a cool thought, and I've always wanted to kind of delve more into his discography. I just, I don't know if I'm going to like any of it, but I hope I do. So that was Ammonia Avenue, now we have, I could be wrong, but I do believe this was his final studio output. I really shouldn't, shouldn't be saying these things if I'm not 100% sure, but that's what my memory is fucking telling me. Uh, this is called Stere Stereotomy. It's got a really dark kind of like plastic uh, sleeve, so I'll take this off. It's blue on one side and then the back is red. The packaging is kind of cool. I've heard this album is, you know, far from great, but who knows? That doesn't mean that I won't like it. Pull this motherfucker out. Ugh. There you go, kids. There you go. Lyrics on the back. It's just got, you know, got a record in there. <laughs> it doesn't have an insert. It probably came with one originally. I don't have it. All right. We're fucking, we're doing this. We're, we're, we're solid. All right. I'm just going to go through the stack of CDs. There might be 15 or 20 of them. So I'm not going to go, I'm not going to waste even more than a minute on each one. So I need to knock this out and not make it too long. Although I've been told some of you guys like my longer videos, um, but so that's cool. I don't know. I just don't want to 
I'm tired. It's getting late. I don't want to spend the time. This album, this CD, I bought yesterday, totally forgetting that I had just bought it a couple of months ago. And I was excited when I found it, too. I was like, oh, I've been wanting this. Fuck. So I bought it anyways, um, not knowing that I already fucking own it. That is Sanctuary with Inception. Um, Sanctuary, uh, you know, awesome heavy metal band from Seattle. Came out in the early 80s. Um, features uh, the vocalist uh, that would go on to form Nevermore. And actually, I think there were a couple dudes in this band that went on to form Nevermore, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Like, I'm never sure about anything that I say. This is, yeah, this is uh, um, some re-recorded versions of some early songs, and also, I think it was like some early songs that weren't finished, and they were just something like that. Anyways, these are songs, most of these songs, if you're a Sanctuary fan, you've heard. There's the original Ed Repka art right there. Um, if anyone wants this, by the way, um, if anyone has doubles themselves that they might like to trade and they want this or something, sh uh, shoot me a message. I'll, you know, I'll trade you something for it. <laughs> I don't need it. I have two. Picked this up also yesterday. Got the new, uh, Jungle Rot album, self-titled Jungle Rot. Jungle Rot. Um, put out again by Victory Records, which is weird. <laughs> I normally wouldn't buy anything on that label. Really love the artwork. If you want to look at that again, even with the shitty lighting, it's very fucking cool. Um, I like Jungle Rod. Um, you know, they're never going to be one of the best death metal bands out there. But what I like about them is just they're pretty fucking consistent. Um, you know, they, they started playing this kind of, you know, primal old school death metal in the late 90s when, uh, when that wasn't the cool thing like it is now. These guys were doing it before, you know, most other bands were doing it. Um, I'm guessing it was because of age. I, I'm assuming, or I, I had always assumed that they kind of missed, you know, you know, the, the, the beginning. They, they were probably too young to have released an album in 89 or 90, so instead it was the late 90s, but, uh, yeah, I, I really dig Jungle Rot. They're just good at what they do. I saw them live one time playing with, uh, Suffocation and, and Exhumed, and they were really good. Also picked this up yesterday, um, Vangelis Voices. Um, I, I haven't heard most of Vangelis's work, but um, he has done some shit that is really kind of dear to me, um, such as the soundtrack to Blade Runner, and also his contributions to the um, Aphrodite's Child 666 album, uh, which is possibly my favorite prog album of all time. Fucking incredible album. Get that. If you don't have it and you like prog, your life is not yet complete without it. Also with those, I picked up uh, Birds and Steel, Invictus. Uh, you know, classic New York uh, power metal. What uh, what can I say about this one? I've never heard it. I've heard a lot of their stuff, but I haven't heard this. But I have been told this is one of their better albums, so I'm I, I'm pretty excited to hear it, to be honest. I, I dig Birds and Steel a lot. <laughs> um, and if you watch my last few videos, you know I've been kind of delving into the Melvins discography, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, so I picked this up, The Bootlicker. Haven't heard it. It's part, uh, what, two? I think it's part two of a three album series. Um, yeah. So I have two of those now. I just need one more. I don't remember the name of it. Uh, now we have uh, Washington Grindcore Band, The Drip. The, these guys are from not really too far from where I live. Uh, a presentation of Gruesome Poetics. This is a, an EP. Uh, came out in 2014. To be honest, I'm not a big grind guy, and I never really have been, but I, I, I spun this one time, and I, I, I didn't care for it. Not my thing. I'm not a big grind guy to begin with, but I just, I do like some, and this didn't really scratch that itch. I mean, it could just be me. There's another really kind of oddball release that I normally wouldn't buy, but it was cheap, and I thought, why not? We have Steven Wilson. Kind of cool cover art. Um, with the Raven that refused to sing and other stories. Steven Wilson, I don't know a whole lot about, but he's from Porcupine Tree, progressive band that I've <laughs> never heard. But I've known the name forever, and I've seen their shit around. I've always wanted to check them out. So I guess I'll check out one of his solo albums first and see what, see if I like it. I was talking to, to one of you guys the other day about this band. I don't remember who, but uh, this is a random buy, and I'm really pleased with it. Oh, the band is called Wrong. I think it's self-titled. Um, Relapse Records. Wrong are they? What can I say? I mean, I'm no expert on this type of sound, but they play, you know, that like 
90s noise rock. Think like Helmet and Unsane and stuff like that, and these guys are just nailing that sound. It's uh, well written, well played, heavy, really fucking good. Next, um, some of you also might know if you've watched a lot of my videos, I'm a big Dead Can Dance fan. I don't, I own a lot of their shit. I don't have anything from Lisa Gerard solo. I don't know if you can consider, I, I, I thought this was a solo album, but it's Lisa Gerard and uh, Peter Bork, who I, is, from what I've read is, I think he's like a longtime contributor, or collaborator, uh, collaborator I should say. Um, the album is called Duality. I heard it's very good, I haven't listened to it yet. It came came out on uh, 4AD Records, which is uh, you know the, the label that put out uh, most of, if not all of Dead Can Dance's work. Um, very, very psyched to hear that. Speaking of Helmet, just talking about them a minute ago, I used to have a bunch of their albums in the 90s, and I, I had since gotten rid of them, and now I'm like, kind of wanting to revisit that shit, so I picked up Meantime. Um, yeah, I mean, if any of you guys grew up in the 90s like I did, you've likely heard this album, um, or at least some of it. But uh, yeah, been, uh, been in the mood for kind of delving into more of that shit. We're kind of, you know, taking a step back and re-listening. I never had heard a lot of that noise rock, you know, that amphetamine reptile stuff. So if anyone has any uh, recommendations, throw them my way. Um, I really like Unsane. So I like Unsane. I like Helmet. Um, I've heard a little bit of the Jesus Lizard and thought that was pretty cool. I haven't heard a lot, though. Um, all right, moving on. Suicidal Tendencies. Lights, Camera, Revolution. Um, what can I say about Suicidal? Uh, you know, California uh, crossover band. Um, it came out in like 90, I think. In 1990. Haven't heard it. Um, to be honest, I never liked Suicidal really until recently. Um, uh, something just, they just clicked with me, or at least the early stuff. And so I haven't heard this. I've only heard some of their really early stuff. So I'm, I'm really psyched to dig into that one also. Man of War, Fighting the World. It's fucking Man of War. Next, I've talked about my love of this band, and goddamn, I do love them still. Camelot with Karma. They are one of my favorite... I don't like a lot of power metal albums, but they are hands down one of my favorite power metal bands. Um, yeah, I have heard this, and it's a great fucking album, so I'm, I'm glad to finally own it. Just good, kind of proggy tinted... Uh, tinged? Tinted. <laughs> proggy tinged power metal. Um, very good stuff. Excellent vocals, excellent musicianship, top-notch songwriting. Um, I don't listen to a lot of Doom. Um, really, a lot of Doom just is boring to me, but uh, this band is pretty cool. We got Conan, Monos. This is a... came out on Peaceville. Um, Conan play, just some heavy, heavy, heavy Doom. It's, it's just... it's, it's fucking good. <laughs> I haven't heard anything else they've done except for that. Uh, Picked up this release that I missed from, I think it was last year, or maybe earlier this year, I don't... I think it was last year. Uh, Gruesome. This kind of rounds out my Gruesome collection. I now have all their stuff. This is uh, Fragments of Psyche. Psyche? Psyche? I don't fucking know. I don't know how to read or talk. Um, this is an EP, and it has... Kind of the reason I didn't buy it before is because, I mean, it's not a lot of stuff on here, but I'm glad I got it. It's got, like, it's got seven songs. Um, it's got... Um, it's got stuff that was basically a demo that they did before their first album came out, so I think all these songs are on that uh, first album, which is very good. Um, we got Choke On It, 91, originally uh, recorded by Death, and we also have Fragments of Psyche, title track, which um, Sean Reinert from Death and Cynic and other stuff plays drums on that album. Um, let's see, and there's something going on with choke on it. Originally recorded by Death in 91. Sorry, guys. Thanks for hanging on there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Got a guest guitar solo by James Murphy. So that's cool. And yeah. I don't know. It's kind of a cool little novelty thing to have. Um, I really do like this band. And I like what they're, I like what they're doing. But anyway, that was a Death song. Um, really cool. Sean, I, I love Sean Reiner's drumming, by the way. That guy's phenomenal. One of the best. Uh, we have Infernal Curse with the End Upon Us Selenic Exhumations, which is it's basically a compilation of two EPs. Um, they are a South American uh, Black Death band. Really, really good. You know, if you like that dirty South American Black Death stuff, 
well worth looking into. As well as this one. I don't remember countries. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say South American. Um, you're probably not going to be able to see this artwork well, but this album is killer. This band is awesome. Master of Cruelty. It's in, It's too bad you can't see that art because it's quite cool. Uh, spit on the Holy Grail. Fuck yeah. Really good stuff. Really kind of black death thrash. You know. <laughs> South American shit. So good. I always, always have loved that sound. Oh wow. It's a really fucking cool logo. Check that logo out. Sick. So look into Master of Cruelty, man. Um, <laughs> you won't be disappointed. You might be disappointed with this album, though. I picked this up randomly just because it was really cheap, and I do like this band, but not so much the direction that they've gone in for the last 20 years, maybe? I don't know. Uh, Hypocrisy, The End of Disclosure. Um, I mean, it's not a bad album by any means. It's, it's melodic death metal, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, some people probably really dig this. I don't regret buying it necessarily, but, uh, you know, it didn't really do much for me. Picked up uh, another Descendants album just because I, I found it randomly. I've really only ever heard My Logo's The College, so now I have All, which came out in, uh, 87. Um, maybe, like, Pat or maybe, um, Jason Hook can kind of tell me where this, or how this compares to their other stuff, or any of you guys, really. I've only, you know, I haven't heard a lot of their shit, like I said, the one album. So, yeah, it'll be cool to kind of keep going a little bit. Next we have a one of the older Kansas albums that I really didn't even know existed, because I, as I've said earlier in one of my, you know, my past ten videos or so, I've really only gotten into this band, like, literally this year. So this one is Song for America. And uh, came out in 75, and I just, I'd never heard of it. So it was kind of a surprise to me. I saw it randomly, and I was like, oh, okay. But it came out in 75, so I feel like it should be a good album. I mean, that was, you know, that was when they were in their prime. So stoked to listen to that. Uh, here's another cool South American band that uh, uh, more people should look into. We got Vomit of Doom with Southern Black Demon. Just good Black Death, man. South American Black Death. Uh, I like it a lot. Really fucking good. Next, we have a band that uh, you've heard Pat from Ground Zero Salem talk a lot about. And him and I share the, basically the exact same opinion of this band. And that is that they are vastly underrated. We got Villains with Life Code of Decadence. Um... They are, or used to be, I don't know if they're still signed to Nuclear War now, but Yusuke has put out some of their stuff, so you know it's got to be good. Um, did I show that already? They, they have a very interesting uh, cover art style. I mean, it's like you, it's like stuff you've never seen, which is what I think is cool. I mean, we've, we've, we've seen Chris Moyen artwork, Mark Riddick artwork. We've seen that a hundred times or more. Um, I like how they're doing something different with their art. Um, it was a bit... I didn't know what to think about it at first, but then when I thought about it more, I'm like, this is really fucking cool. Anyway, Villains Hail from New York. They are basically a black metal band with 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 um, tons of punk, uh, thrash, and, you know, just traditional heavy metal thrown in there. Um, awesome stuff. I remember there was kind of a buzz about them when they when they first, you know, showed up, but I, I just... That's the problem with, with the, 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 you know, the world we live in nowadays is people just forget about shit too quickly. We don't have, you know, we just have short-term memories and we don't fucking, I don't know, we just don't remember shit like we used to. So I feel like a band will come out, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll be hyped up and then the next year no one's talking about, talking about them, you know, and they're still a good band, but it's, I don't know, it's annoying. Anyway, we got Villains Drenched in the Poisons, another Villains album. I'm definitely going to pick up anything I can by them. So, good to have those. Last but not least, we have the self-titled album from Suicidal Tendencies. What can I say about this? Nothing that would do it any justice. Um, classic crossover, you know. Uh, this is kind of when they leaned a little bit more to the punk side, more so than they did later on. But there's still tons of heavy metal, you know, on here. Yeah. Um, it's fucking awesome. Anyways, I am done. I'm glad to have gotten through that big stack of shit. 
And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, commenting, subscribing, all that you do for me, and we'll talk soon. Cheers.